Welcome to this tutorial where you're going to learn how the HTTP module works in Make. And therefore, we're going to set up an HTTP module. We're going to trigger it with a webhook, and then we're going to get data using an API. And we're also going to add parameters to that API request, as well as parse the response. So we're going to bring it into a format so that we can work with it afterwards in a lot nicer way. Okay, so all of these things are important for you to understand whenever you want to build some real make automations that aren't available directly inside of make as a module. Okay, so let's go over it. And by the way, this is part four of a series. So if you don't understand things that are going on in this video, you should check out one, two and three, where I went over what a webhook is, where I explained what JSON is, and where I explained what an API is. Okay, so all of these are individual videos, definitely check those out if you are lost at any point. Okay, so let's get started with the HTTP module. So Whenever we have a webhook and it triggers an automation, I want this time to just make a request, okay? So here, when you select HTTP module, you can just do like that and you can select it here, then you can make a request. So in this video, we're just going to make a request. In the next one, we're going to make an authenticated request. And you're going to learn what that means and how that works. But let's start with that. So we make a request. Now, you need this HTTP module whenever you want to use an API that is not directly available in here. So you see there are many tools in here. There's Epify, there's Slack, Pinterest, and so forth. All of these tools have an API and make.com built this module based on their API. But sometimes not all the features that the API of any of those given websites or tools, uh, the all, not all the features that are available are actually available inside of the make module itself. So for example, if you go to LinkedIn, you will find that there are a few things that you can do directly from here, but then there are things that you cannot select directly from the LinkedIn module, and therefore you would have to use the LinkedIn API and you could get the data from there. And you could make a significantly more advanced call and get more advanced data or more data than is available through this module. So that's why this HTTP module is not only relevant for modules which aren't available inside of Make, but also for the ones that are available, but the API of those services or websites has more to offer that Make hasn't integrated because it is a lot of work to build all of these things out and they need developers to do all of that stuff. So in that case, they maybe just do the, let's say 20% that are most used and all the other stuff that you can still do. That's something you would have to do yourself with such an HTTP request, okay? But we're not going to do it with any of those complex APIs. We're just going to do it with this very simple one and spoonacular.com. And there you can just go over to the docs and you can check out the API documentation. So the documentation contains information about how to use an API. So any given API for any kind of website, some are av available for recipes like this one, others are available for weather, others are available for sports, betting and so forth. All of those APIs, they have a documentation which explains you how things work and what endpoints they have. So an endpoint for this particular case here is to search recipes. So last time in video three, we just got a random recipe. So we used this endpoint and by endpoint, I just mean this URL. But today we're going to actually search for recipes and therefore you're going to learn how parameters work. So let's go ahead and use this code here or this URL and use it in our HTTP module. So we need a URL or a URL here at the top inside of our HTTP module. Then we need to select the method and I'm going to say I want to get data. So I want to get information from that API. And then I need to add a header because I need to use the API key in order to register myself as being the one who has access to this API because this is not fully for free unless you are fine with the free tier. But if you want to use it in a real world application where you have a bunch of users, then you would have to select one of those paid tiers. So in order for them to know who is making the calls, they create this thing called an API key. And we are using that API key in order to identify ourselves as the user who makes the call. 
okay, who wants to retrieve the data from that website. So what we're gonna do now is we can register here, we can go to the console, we can get the API key, so you can show the API key or generate a new API key. I already have one here, so I'm just gonna use that. And I'm gonna add that as the value. And the name for that API key, that's something that you need to get from authentication. So you just need to search for authentication and there you will find the authentication guide and it says if you want to have an API key request, you need to add that to your header. So that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm adding this as the x-api-key name with the value of the API key and the body type will be raw and the content type will be JSON. So we looked at that in the last video in case you're wondering. So at this point, if I use the complex search, I can add something called a query string. So I can add parameters to the query string. A query is a search request, so to speak. So I'm searching for a given name, a given value. And if you go over here and you go to search recipes, you see you can search recipes by query. So if you use the parameter query, you could, for example, search for pasta. So this is the natural language recipe search query. So let's just do exactly that. Let's use query as type string with example pasta. So therefore I'm going to go here. I'm going to say, actually I'm going to copy it because then I cannot make any mistakes. So I'm going to take this query and as a value, I'm just going to say pasta, for example. Okay. And now let's just go ahead and test this. So I'm going to take this webhook that I created. I'm going to copy this mail address, run the automation, wait for new data, go into new tab, enter the URL and press enter. I see that it says accepted. My automation ran through. I can see this one here. I can click on it and I can see the output. So I'm not so much interested in the input. I'm more interested in the output. And this is the data that I get. So I get a response of type JSON. We looked into what JSON means and what it does. So if you want to make this more readable, you can go to any of your favorite JSON formatters, for example, jsonformatter.curiousconcepts.com. You could process it and then it will show you what the results are. So it gave me a bunch of recipes that have pasta in it. So this one, for example, here, you see farfalla with peas and ham and cream. Then we have, um, but to make tonight, bruschetta style pork and pasta, linguine e americana. Then we have beef, lo me noodles, lo mein noodles, whatever. So all of these, they have pasta in them. So these are the results that I got, a bunch of results, actually 10 of them, and 10 recipes that I could now go ahead and use. Pistachio pasta sounds very nice, even though I'm intolerant against pistachio. So there we are. We made a request with a query. So now that we did that with pasta, let's try something else. Let's say we want to have 10 beef recipes. So I'm going to change that to beef. I'm going to run it again. I'm going to wait for new data. I'm going to run the webhook again. Just press enter. And then I should get a bunch of beef responses here. So a bunch of recipes that contain beef. So I'm going to copy that again. I'm going to make it readable. So post it in here. And now I have pork schnitzel and apple salad. Then I have beef pot pies with Irish cheddar crust, braised and nice beef and so forth. You see all kind of beef recipes so here their beef is made in meatball as meatballs and so forth so now that we know how queries work let's try a final one let's try cuisine okay or maybe even well if you want to have a certain diet so let's say let's let's do diet okay let's say we are a vegetarian so we should not get any meat recipes so let's modify our http module where we say that the diet is going to be vegetarian. No, actually, I'm not going to write that out. I'm going to copy it from here. <laughs> so there we are, vegetarian. I, I would have mistyped it. And if you mistype it, it will not work properly. So uh, if you have a typo in there or something like that. So let's save it like this. Let's run it once more. Let's wait for new data. Let's go ahead and run it. And we will see that the result that we get is going to be some vegetarian stuff. So none of the food that we're going to get or the recipes that we're going to get now should contain any meat. So asparagus and pea soup, that sounds pretty vegetarian. Garlic kale, <laughs> uh, garlicky kale. Yeah, some of them are like are a little weird. Let's actually check out one of this, these things here. Red kidney bean jambalaya. That sounds nice. Let's do that. 
there we are so this is a vegetarian meal you even get the image associated with it cauliflower brown rice vegetable fried rice well some people will love that others will not so much so let's go over here there we are okay so these are just some example outputs that we get now let's look at one option that we have at the very bottom and what it does and that's this parse response so we can set that to true and then it will allow us to parse the response into usable objects so there are two different ways how you can do that either you just directly use this thing called parse json so this parse json it will take the data output from my http module now and it will make readable data from it now we could create a data structure but let's do it without and let's just say the final is to set a variable because it just doesn't like it if um uh yeah if the parse json is the last item inside of your scenario so let's run it once again wait for new data let's run the webhook to trigger the automation and we will see that now it took the well this very difficult to read json code or text and it made usable objects out of it so here it gave us the results as an array so first is asparagus pea soup then we have the garlicky kale then we have the red kidney bean jambalaya and so forth okay so now what we could do is we could use any of those recipes and like store them in our database individually for example okay all right and now because very often you have the situation where you actually want your json to be parsed and this would be the default approach well they decided to put this option in here to parse the response so i can just say yes here and then i can get rid of this module and save myself the time of creating an extra module which i have to manually set up so you see before the output was like this we got it as a pure json file or json text and unedited and now let's run it again and we will see that this time we get the output in the same way that we got the output from our json parser okay so this little option that we had there in this http module generated all of these outputs and now you could go ahead and use these outputs in whatever fashion you want you can aggregate them you can run an automation that goes through all of them individually and stores them individually in a database or triggers some other automation in the back end but yeah that's pretty much it that's what the http module does it's very powerful and in the next video we're going to look at how we can do the authentication where we make sure that we get access to apis where you cannot just use an api key but you actually need to be authenticated in a more sophisticated way so to speak okay because this isn't really safe because if anybody just got my api key they could just register as myself and use up all of my tokens or all of my credits and uh, yeah generate a lot of cost for me but there are more sophisticated ways to be authenticated so that's that technically for this video um, by the way if you haven't joined already join my ai automation specialist community i'd love to see you there there you get access to the ai automation masterclass and there you're going to learn everything that you need to know about airtable and make and then you're also getting access to a bunch of really amazing templates that will First of all, teach you how to become an AI automator and an automation specialist. But at the same time, these are templates that you can use and actually sell to other businesses and make a good living out of it. So join the community. I'd be happy to see you there. The link is in the description below and subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. So you don't miss out the next video that is about how to authenticate with OAuth 2.0. So see you in the next video.